warning a flagrant violation of media freedom. It's a subgenre of social media that generates millions of dollars through billions of clicks. Travel vlogging, globe trotting, social media influencers sharing their quote unquote authentic travel experiences. It pays for the influencers and for some of the countries they visit. It's a golden PR opportunity. Pakistan, for instance, wants to shed its image as being too dangerous for tourists. If you subscribe, as so many have, to travel vloggers like Rosie Gabrielle, Jordan Taylor, and Eva Zubek, you'll have seen a different side of Pakistan, one in which you can camp out in the Khyber Pass, solo hike through the Swat Valley, or discover beaches along the Persian Gulf. A lot of this content comes with the government's seal of approval. It's out to capitalize on the PR potential of photogenic visitors, white ones, with big online audiences. The Listening Post's Minakshi Ravi now on the story behind Pakistan's social media makeover. Today we have a report on the recruitment of terrorists in Pakistan. Pakistan is on edge after the devastating Thursday attack. Pakistan has a serious image problem. So who are the Pakistani We're Taliban? An American drone strike has killed the powerful Pakistan Taliban leader. Who For years, the headlines have been about drone strikes, religious extremists, domestic bombings, instability, social and political. And it's where one of the biggest manhunts of modern times came to an end. President Obama broke the news of bin Laden's People death. Are the they simply can't believe that the world's most wanted man was living in their midst. Just try building a tourism industry around all of that. That's the job Syed Zulfikar Bukhari has been tasked with. Well, look, I think it's important to see Pakistan in a new lens and come out of that sort of post 9 11. Uh, trauma that we were put through. We've gone leaps and bounds beyond it. So it's about time the world also moves on with it. Pakistan's is the kind of image problem that, once upon a time, would have been outsourced to a PR company based in New York or London. It would have been managed through glossy ad campaigns in magazines or on television. These days, the trick is to bring on the influencers. And in this video, I'm going to take you on an epic six-day adventure to the north of Pakistan. They're young, telegenic, and adventurous, equipped with anything from a smartphone on a selfie stick to a full camera crew with top-of-the-range equipment. They create some of the most popular and impactful travel videos today. It is jet ski time in Pakistan. All in all, Pakistan turned out to be one of the most surprising adventures of my life. They call themselves expert vagabonds, professional travelers, experienced seekers, and they are key to the comeback that Pakistan's tourism industry wants to make. It's been interesting that all of a sudden these um, almost completely white Westerners start, start showing up. There's obviously a global industry where nation states are looking to project certain images about themselves and, and carry out PR exercises. To you calling Pakistan a terrorist country, oh, I bet you didn't visit the country then. So in that sense, the Pakistani state is neither unique nor doing something particularly unprecedented. This was so amazing. This was a dream come true for me. When I went to Pakistan, what I saw was a country that was completely different from pretty much everything you see in the news. It's a really interesting situation because I feel that the vloggers and the bloggers kind of came first. And it was only after a little while that the Pakistani government noticed that these people are coming and creating beautiful content that talks nicely about the country. My name is Eva. Eva Zubek is from Poland. Over the last year, I traveled to Pakistan far and wide. With 463,000 subscribers on YouTube and almost as many on Instagram, she is among the top travel vloggers out there. She's posted from Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, even Syria. And the access she got in Pakistan was extraordinary. Wow, is this for me? Uh. Oh, this is the typical roti that the porters here eat and make. Zubek has made films from adventure locations like the K2 mountain in northern Pakistan and from some locations that many Pakistanis would like to visit, but cannot. And then there was a helicopter. In September 2019, she filmed a marathon in the remote Naltar Valley of Gilgit, Baltistan, and took a lift from the Pakistani Air Force to get there. And then there were the videos she made in Gwadar, the port city in the southwestern region of Balochistan. This is just amazing. 
Balochistan has long had an insurgency on its hands and is a closed off, no go zone for the majority of Pakistanis. It is also a black hole for news and information. Most Pakistani journalists aren't allowed to go there, but a travel blogger from Poland did. She says that, you know, how Balochistan has the potential to be the next beach destination of this region. And uh, yes, of course, the beaches of Gavadar are stunning, but at the same time, they're also inaccessible. And you cannot make a beach destination if it's restricted for a common traveler to actually go to these areas. And if a foreigner looks at that video and comes to Pakistan and you know wants to have a luxury vacation on the beach, there is no infrastructure available there to make that happen. What was very obvious is that uh, Eva and, and quite a few others um, had access to parts of Pakistan that Pakistanis don't have access to. There's a very controlled environment within which any conversation in Balochistan happens in Pakistan. There's a lot of political unrest there, but also the fact that a lot of the Afghan Taliban is allegedly uh, based out there. There's speculation, obviously, that, that there's, this facilitation is being done by the state. I think there is a bit of a misconception that as foreign travel vloggers, we are given access to more places than local travel bloggers or even just local travelers. And that's not quite true. And I think it's frankly quite silly of people to suggest that, that the content that I make is being controlled or, or constrained by um, the state. That, I mean, I'm, I'm not being censored by anyone. I create my own travel content uh, in the way that I like it and the way that I experience it. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> the Pakistani government has partnered with social media influencers, both domestic and international. It's clear, though, that Western bloggers, white ones, are a big part of the tourism push. Last year, Zubek and other influencers like Trevor James and Rosie Gabrielle from Canada and Alexandra Reynolds from the US had an audience with the Prime Minister Imran Khan. Local bloggers were left out. That irritated many Pakistanis who say their government is reinforcing the social prejudices of a bygone colonial era. The idea that Westerners have more credibility than Pakistanis or the notion that, quote, white is right that a white person's word outweighs that of a brown person, even when the brown person is from the country in question. We raised this point with the chairman of Pakistan's National Tourism Coordination Board. I don't even think it's anything that important uh, to even discuss in an interview, to be honest, I don't think it's even worthy. But, you know, at the end of the day, Pakistan was a co colonialized country. Subconsciously, I think you listen to the person from the outside. So even when you have local bloggers and they do the exact same thing or maybe even better, it's difficult for them to comprehend or believe it until maybe an Italian guy or an American guy or girl comes and does it. It was my first stop in Pakistan and I had no idea that this place would take me back 2,000 years in history. It's hilarious also that, <laughs> that the state decides that, oh, well, you know, here's a really regressive attitude that demeans our entire population, so let's reinforce it. And the fact that, you know, as he's brazenly admitting that our local elites are not interested in challenging this really reprehensive, um, outdated way of thinking, but rather looking to reinforce that. Islamabad seems to have got the message that Pakistani vloggers won't accept this kind of treatment. It's like a prominent YouTubers or digital publishers group this year's meeting between the Prime Minister and social media influencers had a different look. The vloggers were all Pakistani. Optical missteps aside, the government says its tourism push is making an impact, with the influencers and their work getting upcycled onto more traditional, established platforms. Magazines like Condé Nast and Forbes. Just looking at how quickly the image of Pakistan has changed in yeah, literally 18 months, that's huge. I mean, the country was almost off limits to most travelers for like a decade. And then all of a sudden, everything changed. I think it shows the power of social media and the power of social media, of, of travel vlogging in general. The UN chief who recently visited, he said that Pakistan has made a uh, remarkable journey from 
country of terrorism to tourism. So people do see these things changing, but I think now is the time when you actually start spending on infrastructure, on roads, on building hotels. And uh, I think it's also important that people have information about the ground realities so they don't really come with expectations that will not be fulfilled. That's so delicious.